Hello everyone, X Wall Kill Bethelite here. And at Bethel, just like anywhere else, you're judged to a certain extent by who you hang around. Who your friends are somewhat determines who some of the older Bethelites who are watching all these young guys come in who they categorize them as sometimes has to do with who they hang around with. You could be a spiritual guy. You could be a, a good guy. But because you like to have lunch and hang out with the people you work with in your department and the people you work with in your department are all known to be goof offs that, that, that don't really care about Bethel that are always missing uh, their dish duties and other assignments and out missing work. Like you don't want to be thrown in that batch at Bethel because once a group of people puts you in a certain category, you got to understand that everybody at Bethel has got different schedules so that impression that you give is going to last because all they're going to know about you is the impression that's given which is sometimes just what they see at lunch what they see who they see you with walking down the halls so if you get a bad impression people get a bad impression they got different meeting schedules than you they go to different as assemblies you're just going to be in that negative light. So I wanted to hang out with people who were spiritual. Uh, I knew the people at work uh, and I knew people at Bethel who were at Bethel and would curse and would laugh and there would be nothing different from working at a regular company in some warehouse or factory, the only difference is that you're not getting paid. The people you're working around cursing and carrying on and and and, and the, the 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 bad humor, the, the the sexual jokes. And if you had to sleep with somebody at Bethel, who would it be? All that sort of thing that the easiest thing in the world is you're new at Bethel. You don't know anybody. So just hang out with the people that you work with. Just hang out with them. What I was told at Bethel was you don't want to just fall into that crowd of people who just hang out with people uh, out of convenience. You want to take your time, find people who are spiritual and sit with them. So for the longest time, I would just sit next to the table head. Uh, table heads typically would be someone who would be a Bethel elder. Someone had been around for a long time. I would sit next to them because I didn't want any, I didn't want to have a bad impression. People to just think, oh, I'm like these guys over here goofing off, laughing all loud during lunchtime just because I'm sitting with them. There was a brother who offer to help out a lot. When I was new at Bethel and I'm walking around and everybody knows you're new because you're carrying this big packet. The packet with the map in there of where everything is and this big packet of where you're supposed to be and all this other stuff. You're carrying this around and everybody knows you're new. Now there's some people, like I was mentioning, the people who are just goofing around that's gonna make fun of you, call you a new boy, this, that, and the third. But then there was a brother that, hey, I see you're new here. Uh, do you need help with anything, brother? And uh, I mean, I, he would he would get pretty close to me. It was an issue with personal space. Uh, but I'm just thinking, hey, maybe he's just a, a used to being around people a lot and he gets real close. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, this guy sounds like you know, maybe Jehovah's answering my prayers. You know, I'm looking for somebody to kind of hang around with, uh, have lunch, sit with, things like that. 
And here comes his brother, full suit. He's wearing the full suit jacket and everything. And he's offering to help me, show me where things are, and so on and so forth. And, and he talks a lot about himself. He told me he was anointed. And as soon as I heard that, I mean, coming from Dayton, Ohio, as soon as I hear that, you know, this is a brother at Bethel. Finally, somebody that seems to be taking it seriously. He says he's anointed. Uh, I figured he would be married because he looked like he was in his later 30s, early 40s, somewhere around there. I don't think he'd be too much older than 40, 45 ish. Uh, and. I decided, OK, this is who I'm going to look for during lunch. This is who I'm going to look for during the Bethel family watchtower study to to hang out with somebody. And this is a person that's anointed. So I'm like, well, should have some real interesting discussions with him. Lunchtime, I go and, and, and I see the brother sitting at a table. I go over to the table to eat and sure enough we have a discussion a, a you know spiritual discussion at the table talking about the bible reading for that week and uh a brother who was sitting next to him i'm sitting across from him was getting ready to enjoy his his meal he had a fork full of the eggplant parmesan which i like now my first time trying it was at bethel and it took me a while to like it, but now I like eggplant parmesan. He had him a nice fork full of eggplant parmesan. And I don't know if you're the type of person, some people do this, where when they're about to eat, they almost inhale. They grab their fork and they're, you know, they inhale as they eat. They almost like they're, you have a fork, but it's almost like you're eating through a spoon because you're like sucking it in. And that's one of those brothers that was sitting next to him. And he picks up that fork and he's. And I mean, it's like the expression on his face. Was like somebody hit him in the head with a bag full of bricks. And I didn't know what in the world was going on, but the brother slowly sits his fork down, kind of pushes his plate around, uh, put a plate away and just sits there with this disgusted look on his face. And eventually it hit me also. It was a smell, it was an odor. Uh, and it was unpleasant. That odor was unpleasant. And uh, after lunch, I'm leaving and I'm thinking, did somebody, like there isn't any dogs around Bethel. Did somebody step in some cow manure? We got it. We do got cows. We got cows. We got steers at Bethel. Did somebody, did somebody who works in the farm area, did they step in some manure and, and carry that in there into the dining room where we're trying to eat? So I, I left, forgot all about it. Watchtower study. I looked for my buddy and sure enough, the brother's there and I sit next to him. And yeah, he's spiritual. I mean, that was the type of person I like. Somebody who I could sit down next to and we're talking about spiritual stuff. We're talking about the Watchtower study. We're talking about how the day went. He's telling me about Bethel and things to uh, help make my stay more comfortable. And the brother was sitting down next to me at the uh, Bethel family Watchtower study. And uh, the brother uh farted it was not something that you could mistake for anything else the brother farted uh and he at first did that thing where you kind of tilt to the side and it's like my brother go to the bathroom because typically this tilt to the side thing you don't do that just because you farted you do that because you got to take a number two and you're trying your hardest to not go you got to take a number two and you're you're trying to hold it in. And I'm like, is he really doing what I think he's doing? Full suit and everything. Spiritual. Anointed brother. Tilted to the side. And 
he let out a wet fart, a sloppy fart. It's those are not mistakable. You can't play off a wet sloppy fart. So he he eventually thank Jehovah, he eventually gets up and starts heading to the bathroom and the brother had what looked like a wet spot on the back of his pants. And I'm thinking, I think this brother took a dump on himself. And what solidified it was A, the smell. It smelled like sour anus. It smelled like sour butts. Uh, it, it sound like, it smelled like you just, it, it smelled like a farm inside the auditorium of the Bethel family watchtower study. And the brother, I know he took a dump because he, there was a wet spot on the chair from where he got up, uh, a little wet spot. And I'm like, this man either peed on himself or did a number two, a wet sloppy number two. And it stick to the bottom of his pants. And the entire time. I'm sitting there. And I'm trying to think of how am I getting out of this? Because now, now the brother done went to the bathroom. But the smell is still there strong as ever. And I'm the only one there, right? I don't want people thinking it's me. I don't want people thinking it's me. He done left. The smell did not leave with him. The smell is still there sitting next to me, holding up the watchtower, paying attention to the watchtower study, the Bethel family watchtower study. That smell was still there. And it smelled like 18 horses all in unison took a dump there. So this brother... This is this is the second time. And because after that happened, I'm starting to put two and two together to make four and figure out. Maybe he's the one that grossed everybody out while we're trying to eat at lunchtime. Maybe he's the one that smelled like somebody defecated all over the lunch table. Maybe he's the one. That was just, I mean, people were dropping their forks. All you heard was forks hitting plates. People were dropping their forks. When it hit me, it's hard to eat. It's very hard to eat. Imagine getting yourself a plate of food. I don't care if it's your favorite food. Like, I like chicken wings. I don't care if it's your favorite food in the world. Imagine having a plate of the your favorite food with all the fixings, but you got to eat it inside a porta potty, a full porta potty, where you go in, you look in there, and it's dookie uh, all the way up to the rim of the toilet. Are you going to sit in that porta potty, a public porta potty, with dookie all the way up to the seat? of the toilet and just sit here and eat I don't care if you're hungry you're going to smell that it's going to bring to mind unsavory things and there's no way you're going to eat so I'm starting to put two and two together I eventually figure out hey I'm going to have to make up something because when he gets back, I'm not going to be here. So I get up. I go to the water fountain. This is how I play it off. I get up. I go to the water fountain. So if somebody, well, why did, what, what, why'd your, why'd your buddy get up and leave you? I got up to get some water and quote unquote, couldn't tell where my seat was so I just went and sat down at the closest place possible so that was my excuse to get away from that odor 
was I was going to go to the water fountain, get me some water and quote unquote, couldn't figure out where my seat was. Reality, I could smell where the seat was. It was where the brother wet, sloppy, farted, defecated right beside me. You have this spiritual brother and he's got some kind of a problem with his bowels. And this is something and there's something wrong with them mentally. That whole thing I told you about as far as him getting this close to you, he does that to people. When he goes up to talk to somebody, it's 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 as it's it's as if he he's got a you know what I mean he, he's and then he gets super close to you all, all you see is nose hairs that he has not trimmed in the decades that he has been at Bethel it's like he was mentally retarded or something it's like the brother was mentally retarded or something and this is your uh anointed the person that partakes of the bread and the wine according to jehovah's witnesses anointed this is somebody that jehovah spoke to directly and and and, and somehow let him know you're going to be in heaven with me right after the bethel family watchtower study you know, I'm a Bethelite. I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I'm, I'm, my brain is already making up excuses. Maybe the brother hasn't been feeling well. Maybe the brother, uh, you know, had diarrhea. Uh, we're supposed to be a loving Bethel family. This is not something that you, you want to be mature about, something like that. So I have the brother over. Uh, for lunch, I, I, I talked to the brother and I told him every now and again, what I like to do is go into the commissary and, uh, I'll get some of the chicken wings to this day. I like the same thing. It's a box of frozen wings. You open the box and the wings are in like a plastic bag. What I would do is put the plastic bag on a plate in the microwave, heat that bad boy up, and I would eat the wings. And also in the commissary, our commissary was small, and I typically would only get the same thing every time. My wings and also I would get uh, a juice, a box uh, a container of juice. It's like the Welch's juice. If you if you get the whole container of the Welch's juice with the cap that you untwist, then there's a plastic thing in there. You got to pull the plastic thing out and you could just drink the whole thing. Oh man, to me, as a Bethelite with no money, that was heaven. Going to my room with, with a box of the occasional wings and a big thing of juice oh man so invite the brother uh to my room and you know he he comes into the room and he is uh complimenting me uh you know the room was nice and whatnot it was a sea res nice view i remember specifically he was talking about wow look at this view and of course a spiritual brother i mean he's talking about it's a nice place to meditate and uh you know i'm getting ready to heat up my wings and he brought his lunch and i'm thinking man i done found a a spiritual older brother to kind of hang out with at bethel this brother, you know, and it's one of those things where if you were there 
you would think that this is some kind of a joke or a prank or a new boy prank. Like they're playing some kind of prank on me. They're, they're messing with me because I'm new at Bethel. Is what I first started to think. Because I bit down into my wing and this brother had some fresh bread and he was spreading the butter on the bread. And this brother had a blowout. A blowout. A blowout is when you blow the enamel out your pants. Like this brother literally had a flagellance problem. And it wasn't just the flagellants problem. There's something going on with him and wiping himself also. Because he just smelt like that in general. This brother had a blowout. I mean, God almighty! He freaking let off. So I started to kind of figure out why he didn't have a lot of friends. Why this brother would typically be sitting somewhere kind of secluded in full suit and tie. But the problem is this guy is anointed. This guy is anointed. You mean to tell me you're anointed and you don't know that you shouldn't be ripping wet farts everywhere throughout Bethel? Throughout the house of God, you're just walking around ripping wet fart. There was something not right with them. Because, yeah, he gets up and goes to the bathroom, but he blows up the bathroom and the rooms are small. So the whole room smelt like straight shit. You can't be the anointed of Jehovah and smell like straight shit. The whole room smelt like straight shit. Because A, he had a blowout uh, sitting on the chair. That's a whole nother story because that was the chair. One of the things that I got when I got to Bethel was a desk and a chair. He sat on that chair when he had that blowout and just let fuck fart, wet, wet fart slip in that chair. That bad boy smelled. So I had to take that chair put it in the freaking hopper and find another chair. It's a whole long story with that. I'm imagining this brother in heaven, part of the anointed and having blowouts next to Jehovah. And they're on these golden thrones with the crowns and everything. And the brother gets up and he's got a shit stain in the, on the golden throne in heaven like and it wasn't just him there was a brother that an older brother that was also anointed that would talk to himself in the library this brother would just hold a whole freaking conversation while he's reading the watchtower in the library now that I look back on it I'm making a connection to mental illness People who need to really be on medication and Jehovah's Witnesses that think that they're anointed. There's something mentally not right with some of them. Some of the Jehovah's Witnesses who think that they're anointed, there's something not right with them and it's blatantly obvious with what I saw at Bethel. Right? There was no way around this brother essentially taking a shit on himself and that was the three times that I had it associated with him you mean to tell me I associate with the brother three times and all three times he takes a shit on himself you can't be representing Jehovah at Bethel and shit just randomly falls out of your, your your behind, see? I mean, I understand if a person had to use a bathroom and 
They go to the bathroom and, and you know, we're human and things happen. This brother, this stuff starts way before he goes to the bathroom. This stuff starts well before he gets to the bathroom. He had already shot on himself by the time he gets to the bathroom. So my thing is you have all these people, these anointed. This is where all the spiritual food is supposed to be coming from. Right. And you got all these people who are not right mentally. Because the only thing coming from him was spiritual shit. You got all these people that are mentally not right in the head. And I'm talking all oh, my lands the smell. That 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 was bad. That's like you, you would gag. You would straight gag. If you smelled that. It was bad. And, you know, I mean, it's it, talking to my family and whatnot, <laughs> man, the stories that I had to tell, but I didn't have anybody to tell it to because the only thing they wanted to hear was uh, good things. And here I have an anointed Bethelite who has problems with his bowels, right? It could be a medical condition. It very well could be a medical condition, but somebody at Bethel or Bethel or, or the medical staff or somebody should step in and do something to help. He can't just walk around shitting everywhere at Bethel. Uh, it could very well be, you know, that people at Bethel have needs, medical needs, but they don't have the money to acquire those things. Because this brother was late 30s, early 40s, been at Bethel a long time, hadn't been making no money. So if he's got a medical condition, where is he going to get the money for the medicine and whatnot that he needs to maintain his bowels? See, so there's there's a whole lot to it. It's somewhat deep. It's a you got people that have mental health issues. He did way too much. It wasn't just that he kept having blowouts in his pants, but his nose hairs was way out. He had something on his freaking chin looked like a wart. And he would get within an inch of your lips when he would come up to talk to you. Like he was half blind or something. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. But there... There are a handful, a handful of people who were anointed, but had mental health problems. I'm connecting, the more I think about it, people who claim to be anointed, Jehovah's Witnesses, who claim to be anointed, and mental retardation. Comment down below, let me know what you think. X-Wall Kill Bethelite, signing out.